Live 5 News starts now with breaking news. We begin with breaking news right now in Mexico, where at least 42 people are dead after a massive 7.1 earthquake near Mexico City. You're seeing pictures from around that area, around the city, where the mayor says at least 20 buildings have collapsed, and there are reports of people trapped under the rubble there. The Mexico City Airport has suspended operations after the quake that was centered about 76 miles southeast of Mexico City. And once again, authorities say at least 42 dead. The mayor of Mexico City saying at least 20 buildings have collapsed after the 7.1 earthquake. This is a developing situation. We'll update you as soon as more information comes in. We also have breaking news out of London where British police have arrested a third suspect in connection with a bomb that partially exploded on a London subway over the weekend. The Metropolitan Police there, they say they've arrested a 25 year old man in Wales today. They say they're currently searching the address where he was found. Two others were arrested on Saturday for that attack a day before in which a bomb partially exploded on board a packed train. 30 people were hurt in that. Right now, all eyes on Maria. This is the most dangerous category of storm, a Cat 5, and it's here in the Caribbean. Right now, it is bearing down on the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico, and the question remains, will we have to worry about the storm here in the low country? Meteorologist Stephanie Sign in the First Alert Weather Center right now. Stephanie, new information on this massive hurricane in just the last few minutes. What does it show? That is correct, Bill. Really not much of a change with that information. We're still tracking this storm moving northwestward closer and closer, just marching towards the U.S. Virgin Islands and also, unfortunately, Puerto Rico as well. Areas that have been hit by Irma before just about two weeks ago. Unfortunately, they're getting hit again as a Category 5 major, uh, major hurricane here. Plenty of destruction, I'm sure, on the way. Thoughts and prayers with them. You can see that line that track heading straight forward through the islands and then we mentioned the low country will we feel any impacts of course that question is still up in the air but as of right now models as they come out uh, really hour by hour things are looking better. We're not out of the woods completely, but still you can see this uh, route heading into the Atlantic Ocean and that's where we want the storm to go. You can see it's already pretty far away from the low country. This could still change. Like I mentioned, we're not completely out of the woods, but models so far have been looking good, at least for us. You can see that consensus for the next few days moving uh, north of the Dominican Republic. They're also away from the Turks and Caicos, and then it starts to make that northerly turn here into the Atlantic. And of course, this would mean uh, that things would be okay here in the low country, but of course things change daily. We will keep an eye on this storm system as well as Jose more updates on both storms and our local forecast coming up guys. All right, thanks, Stephanie. And hurricane experts say Maria will bring catastrophic damage to Puerto Rico. And the governor of the American territory says no generation has seen a hurricane like this since 1928. This comes after the storm tore through Dominique with 160 mile per hour winds. The National Hurricane Center says preparations for storm surge and flooding should be rushed to completion. The surge is expected anywhere from 7 to 11 feet above sea level as that storm moves through. In the last three years with the great flood of 2015 and then with Hurricane Matthew last year and then Hurricane Irma this year has really been a, a, a tough thing for us here on the farm. The Grief Farms on Johns Island continuing to clean up after Irma brought wind and rain and storm surge to our area. Michael Higdon joining us live with more on how that area looks. Michael? Well, Debbie, the farm and owners are really trying to gear up for their busiest month, which is October, where they see anywhere from 15 to 25,000 people come through here. I'm right inside the gate as you're coming through. You can see they've done a really great job of where folks normally are. But if you were to venture on out and then uh, even this way as well, you start to see things like this. A lot of debris is in the area. Uh, Thomas Legree, one of the owners of the farm, says that they uh, have 300 acres here on the farm. 
farm. 295 of those have more water than they should. Take a look at this video that we got from Sky Tracker 5. You can see a lot of debris, a lot of water on some of these acres. Now, they do say that they already had a pretty wet summer, but Irma aggravated that uh, and a lot of those farm a lot of those fields uh, they can't get tractors in there to mow it uh, to, to uh, do what they need to do in order to plant crops later on. In fact, with the pumpkin patch that they normally have at the beginning of October, they even the field right behind us is where they normally have it and they actually had to move it up into a drier field because they they just said that it is just too saturated out there. They also lost several trees, uh, but they are in the process of cleaning up and they do know that they are going to still allow people to come out here uh, to uh, partake in those festivities that they have, uh, including the uh, the pumpkin patch at the beginning of October. And Thomas Legree, again, one of the owners, says he is just so thankful for the support that the community continues to show them. I'll have more for you coming up in our next hour. For now, though, live on Legree Farms on Johns Island. I'm Michael Higdon. I'll send things back to you. More than a week after the storm, more than 20,000 homes and businesses in South Florida are still in the dark. Authorities say that number is down from the 4.4 million homes that lost power after Irma. South Florida crews continue to travel from neighborhood to neighborhood today in an effort to restore power. And to check up on traffic this afternoon, if you're heading out maybe to catch some dinner or pick up the kids from an event, not much going on, really not an accident to be seen on the map so far this afternoon. So good news there, keeping our fingers crossed a little slow. 526 westbound, this is always the same situation every day at this time of the day. 11 mile per hour speeds moving away from Daniel Islands there over uh, the Don Holt Bridge. Pretty slow. You can see that westbound lane almost at a standstill, moving very slow this afternoon. The other way around, eastbound looking great. So if you're heading in that direction, not much going on. Uh, just some drive times here. 26. Maybe you're heading in that direction. Downtown to Somerville, 29 minutes as of right now. We'll have more traffic updates coming up. Right now, a James Island man is in critical condition, the victim of an apparent hit and run. Charleston police say it happened early Sunday morning on Billfish Court off Fort Johnson in the Harbor Woods 3 subdivision. That's where we find police reporter Harp Jacobs right now. Harp, the victim's friend told police the hit and run driver was speeding through that neighborhood. Bill actually spoke to the victim on the phone about an hour ago. He's in ICU. He's still hurting a lot, as you can imagine, but he's finally talking to police. According to the incident report, he was at his buddy's house over here on Blue, uh, Blue Marlin Drive here in the subdivision. He went outside to smoke a cigarette. The friend reportedly saw this truck, a Ford F-150, black with tinted windows, speed through the neighborhood. That's when the victim said, quoting now, not in my neighborhood, he got in his golf cart. He said he's going to confront the uh, actual uh, driver. So here's what happened. The friend heard some noises. He heard arguing and then total silence. He and his girlfriend went to check and they found his buddy lying on his back here on Billfish Court this street. He had injuries to his face, his legs, his back. Police couldn't talk to him at the time, but they can now he was taken to MUSC. As far for, for that truck, that truck is still out there. Against, it's a Ford F-150. It's black and has tinted windows. Anybody with information on that truck should call Charleston Police or Crime Stoppers. Live in James Island, Harv Jacobs, Live 5 News. We have an update to the breaking news we first brought you yesterday. A federal court of appeals has denied the request by convicted Emmanuel Amy church shooter Dylan Roof for new lawyers. Roof had submitted the handwritten appeal yesterday calling his two attorneys his political and biological enemies. In their one sentence denial, the court of appeals simply wrote the court denies the motion for substitution of counsel on appeal. Roof was found guilty last December and sentenced to death in January. And the man accused of planning an attack inspired by Dylan Roof is now at a prison in New York. The Federal Bureau of Prisons says Benjamin McDowell, whom you see here, was taken to the Metropolitan Correctional Center in New York two weeks ago. His mental evaluation has also been extended to November. McDowell was arrested in Myrtle Beach in February after his Facebook posts led the FBI to believe he had plans to carry out an attack. Right now, East Bay Street in front of the U.S. Custom House is back open after a week of repairs to a water main break. Brad Stryker is there live where that break happened. Brad, just a few hours ago, there was a huge hole in that street right behind you. 
Yeah, a huge hole that left all these businesses behind me without water for a couple of hours last Sunday. That's when the water main break happened, right before Hurricane Irma's effects hit here in Charleston. And that left a portion of East Bay Street completely shut down for a number of days. But crews expected that they were going to be able to complete those repairs last Tuesday. But it wasn't until today at 2 p.m. that this road was reopened. So obviously that's one full week after they had originally planned. Now traffic, as you can see, is moving pretty steadily through here now. No really blockages or anything like that. But some businesses in the area say that the week long road closure did have an impact on their sales. Coming up tonight at 6, you can hear from one of those businesses themselves. For now, live in downtown Charleston, I'm Brad Stryker, Live 5 News. Breaking news right now in downtown Charleston. Charleston County Dispatch says Calhoun Street between Jonathan Lucas and Gadsden Streets shut down because of a car crash. Dispatch says this is a two vehicle accident with possible injuries. As soon as we get more information, we'll let you know here on Live 5 News and on Live5News.com. First alert weather sponsored by Service Master. In the last few hours, the Low Country Giving Day kicked off downtown at Joe Riley Park, the event designed to raise awareness for local nonprofit groups. Alexis Simmons is at the event right now. Alexis, all of this is for a very good cause, or causes, I should say. <laughs> yeah, Debbie, over the last three years that the Low Country Giving Day has been going on, they raised about $15 million for local nonprofits. I'm with one right now. This is Becca with Field to Families. Tell me a little bit about your organization and kind of how this giving helps you all to be able to do what you do. Sure. Um, so we're Fields to Families and we go to farms and local or um, harvest local vegetables. We go to markets and um, grab donations and we send them to 25 local nonprofit agencies. So we are a nonprofit that's getting fresh produce and giving it to um, area service agencies. We use the money for program support so that we can um, give more people healthy food access in the low country. Right. And Becca is just one of 140 different nonprofits that are represented all throughout the Joe out here. It's been a great turnout so far, Becca. How has uh, have you seen a lot of interest of people coming up to you today? Yes, yes, and we're handing out um, seeds, and people can um, get seeds for container gardens or their gardens at home. And we're doing um, uh, little veggie stamps over here. People can make little cards and take them home. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Becca. So, if you want to come out, this event goes on till nine o'clock tonight. But you can also donate online. That link is on live5news.com. If you're not able to make it out today, I'm live at the Joe Alexis. To Simmons, Live 5 News. The state health department has confirmed a second case of West Nile virus in Rock Hill. Authorities say a pest control company will spray for mosquitoes tonight in a one mile radius of the home where the person was infected. The first case in Rock Hill was found last month. Health officials say most people with the West Nile virus don't develop any symptoms. Parts of a main highway on the Outer Banks in North Carolina have been closed because of flooding from Hurricane Jose. Look at this. Parts of North Carolina Highway 12 were closed down because of high surf and tidal flooding associated with that storm off the coast. A coastal flood warning is in effect for the area until late tonight. Now, your first alert forecast from Live 5 News. And believe it or not, that same situation might happen next week in the same spots because of Maria. Uh, really one storm after another. We'll talk about that in just one second, but a live look outside. Beautiful afternoon here in the low country. A few fair weather clouds, not much going on. Warm temperatures, though, were above our averages again today in the upper 80s. 87 degrees now. High temperature up to 88 degrees. And tomorrow, possibly even a few degrees warmer. Right now, coastal flood advisory in effect until 11 p.m. That's for our coastal counties. Counties. Those of you in low lying areas, you know who you are. Uh, by high tide this evening, right around 815, we'll see some higher water uh, sneak into a few spots. So do keep that in mind, especially if you're out and about. Maybe downtown could see a little bit of that water move uh, inland here. 84 degrees in Monk's Corner, 87 in Orangeburg right now, 86 in Walterburg. So uh, just very nice out there. We're dry. It's going to stay that way through the evening hours. Temperatures finally in the mid 60s by 10 p.m. tonight. Now this 
evening. Not quite as cool as what we uh, felt last night. A few extra clouds rolling into the area. You can see that with our future tracker. So overnight uh, we will see the increase of cloud coverage by 8 a.m. tomorrow getting ready for work or school. Uh, you can see some clouds rolling in dry through the morning hours. We'll look at this in the afternoon. We do have that slight chance of a pop up shower, about a 20% chance of that happening, but not widespread. You can see how scattered uh, this activity is. I know some areas are still continuing to dry out from Irma. That's the last major rain uh, we've actually had. So about a week ago, so we could see a stray shower again tomorrow. So once again, the big weather map, high pressure trying to keep us dry, but we have uh, really a weaker system off to the west here. Boundary there, and of course, Jose continues to linger right off of the northeastern coast. And now Maria, updates on Maria, our 5 p.m. update. Uh, really nothing major to report in terms of updates here. We're still at 165 mile per hour speeds. Northwesterly movement at 10 miles per hour, so still moving pretty slowly closer to the U.S. Virgin Islands. Unfortunately, Puerto Rico in the path as well. Moving north of the Dominican Republic by Wednesday and later on this work week, especially into the weekend, that's when we're expecting that turn to the north. And this is what we want because that means it's away from the low country. It's also away from the southeastern coast. Florida does not uh, need another hurricane again. Luckily, it looks like uh, they are out of the woods. In terms of us being out of the woods, not quite yet. We still need to stay updated with models as they start to come out day by day. See some nice consensus for the next few days. We're thinking a nice turn north, though you can see almost all of the models really in agreement with that uh, statement there. So this is fantastic news for us. Like I mentioned, not completely out of the woods. We still have to monitor Maria and also like I mentioned, our surf will be affected again next week. I know we had some rough surf for a few days. High rip current risk. I think over the weekend now it's back down to moderate, but still we could see that happen again next week because of the path of Maria. Uh, Jose still out there. He's barely a hurricane. A barely a hurricane, 75 mile per hour speed. So we're going to see this weekend the next day or so in just to a remnant low. That's what we call tropical systems. Once they lose a lot of that warmer moisture out there, uh, that will continue for the next few days, especially by the weekend. But as you can see, there's not a lot of movement. There's kind of a loop there. It's hanging around right off of the New England uh, coast. But once again, no effects for us here in the low country. Once again, rip current risk still up to moderate. Some choppy waves out there. Like I mentioned, you can see that even into the weekend and next week as Maria moves off into the Atlantic as well. Full seven day forecast. What is it looking like here? We do have a few rain chances. Like we mentioned tomorrow, slight chance of a shower or storm and by Friday here, like we said, first day of fall, 86 degrees, so a little bit of a cool down. We're back to our averages uh, for the weekend. Not a washout on Saturday, so don't cancel the weekend plans. Looking good for Sunday as well. Also, a nice and dry start to our next work week. That's it for your seven day forecast. Let's check up on the roads this afternoon. First alert traffic. You can see not too, too much happening on the roadways this afternoon. Going to zoom in to some slower spots. Looks like an accident has just popped up on 26. Actually, we'll get more information on that one. 526 West found though very slow this afternoon over the Don Holt Bridge as always 11 mile per hour speeds there and now westbound lanes look like they're just not moving. This isn't even because of an accident. This is just typical uh, afternoon commute backup. Also pretty slow getting closer to the Westmoreland bridges on 526 westbound 15 mile per hour speeds. They're a little slow on Savannah Highway in the Avondale area. You can see those northbound lanes around 18 miles per hour as of right now. Maybe you're getting on 26 though. That traffic leaving this afternoon already backing up. We're at 36 minutes from downtown to Somerville. We'll be back with more news after this. First alert traffic sponsored by Hendrick Auto Group. Right now we continue to follow the breaking news out of Mexico. At least 42 people dead after a massive 7.1 earthquake outside of Mexico City. You are seeing live pictures from Mexican television right now. This is the scene. At least 20 buildings have collapsed. There may be people trapped. We'll continue to follow this developing story and bring you updates as soon as more details are available. Right now, homeowners in Florida and Texas are facing the tough decision of whether to rebuild their flooded homes. The Natural Resources uh, Area says that um, Defense Council says more than 30,000 U.S. homes experience repeat flooding, and Texas and Florida are among the top states that suffer the most. More than 100,000 claims have already been filed under FEMA's flood insurance program, which is nearly 
$25 billion in debt. And we are back with an update of those drive times this afternoon. If you're leaving Charleston right now, expect some uh, slow speeds on the interstate around 40 minutes. That's from downtown to Somerville, 29 mile per hour speed. So a little slow going up for the afternoon. 526 westbound also slow. We're down to 46 minutes, 19 minutes. That is it the other way around. Actually 20 right now. Also 17 Highway 17 Savannah Highway. If you're heading in that direction, downtown to Mount Pleasant right around 10 minutes. Drive safely. A University of Florida employee in trouble with the law after some questionable spending practices. Next at 530, what authorities say the director of housing used school credit cards to buy? Plus, while it looks like Maria may turn away from the southeast coast, many in the Caribbean aren't so lucky. The blunt warning officials are giving those in Puerto Rico ahead of this potentially devastating storm.